Hello, my name is Cheryl Arias Wicker, and you're watching Christian Movie Connect. We are at the CBS studio lot at the Biola Media Conference, and today I'm speaking with Phil Cook, who is the organizer of the conference yep. and just a total media guru. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> Hey, you're the media guru. I like the show here you're on. You're doing great, Cheryl. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Um, hey, um, I want you to first tell us a little okay. bit about the, the Biola Media Conference. Okay. You've been doing this for quite a few years now. Right. Biola Media Conference is sponsored by Biola University here in California, Los Angeles. And it's become the largest event for Christians that work in secular entertainment, uh, where you could say it's the largest event for Christians working in Hollywood. So we get a lot of movie producers and writers and directors and television people, uh, a lot of technology people. So it's really quite exciting. Yeah, And this one is very different from a lot of the other uh, conventions and right. festivals that are out there because you are specifically for Christians working in the media. So um, how, uh, what is, what would you say is the purpose of this? Well, you know, it's interesting. C.S. Lewis's stepson, Douglas Gresham, made an interesting statement. He said, we don't need more Christian movies. We need more Christians making good movies. And so I think what we try to do is bring the best people in the industry here to really encourage and teach and train a new generation of people that want to go out there and make a real impact in the, in the industry. And so uh, we've got some great speakers, big time producers and uh, writers and directors and actors who come and share their skills, share their life experience and share the challenges and frustrations they faced in the industry. And um, so it's and it's also a great networking time. People get together. A lot of people come and say, "Man, I didn't know there were this many Christians in Hollywood," and uh, particularly they didn't know there were this many highly placed Christians in Hollywood. So it's really an interesting time for that kind of networking to happen. Okay. And you just have written a new book. Yes. So tell us a little bit Thank about you. the book, Jolt. A Jolt to get the jump on a world that's constantly changing. We just released it last week with Thomas Nelson Publishers, and uh, I, I, you know, the world is changing at such a rapid speed. It's just changing at light speed, and most people are getting left behind. And uh, one of the things that I wanted to write about was how, you know, what can you do to help change your life so you adjust to these kind of changes? The, wh whether you can see change coming and adjust to it, I think, is going to be a huge indicator of your success. How do you achieve your goals? And so uh, it's not just a self-help book. It's, it's more of a look in this incredibly disrupted world where the economy is disrupted, technology is changing, er our lifestyles are changing, everything is changing so quickly. How can we actually use that to achieve our goals and adjust so that change, this radical change, doesn't affect us in such a negative way? Mm -hmm. Now, you write a lot of books and you do okay. a lot of speaking. I'm obsessive. <laughs> yes. So, but you are a producer. Uh -huh. And um, so how did you get into the the track of really trying to influ influence people in the media the way that you are now? That's a great question. I do. I make my living as a director and a producer, and uh, we work with a number of clients, helping them use the media more effectively. And uh, we did a couple Super Bowl spots a couple years ago. So we're involved in all kinds of media projects. But um, I just realized that I, I have this gift, I guess, or um, this real passion about uh, encouraging other people. Uh, I, I see people all the time that uh, seem to be frustrated at the end of their rope. They've hit the wall. Uh, with just a few minor changes would really help them a lot. And so I started studying. Right? I'm, a, I'm a voracious reader. I'm kind of obsessive about growing and learning new things. I like obsessive and, uh, people. <laughs> thank you. And uh, so I'm always writing my, my blog at philcook.com. I write every day and I'm on books and stuff. And so I just really enjoy it. I like seeing people's lives changed. And particularly in this industry, which can be so frustrating and so challenging and so difficult. So um, I, I, I wrote the book Jolt out of that real heart to help people to really say that, yes, you can change your life in a way that will help you stay ahead of the game, help you stay in the game. You know, every day we read about people who are literally becoming unemployable because they can't make changes in their life. Uh, I read a statistic for the when I wrote Jolt that... 83% of employees have actually been passed over for promotions because management didn't feel like they could make the changes in their life to rise to the new position. That's huge. And so I think if we can understand how to navigate this shifting world we live in, we'll be so much better. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm sort of an advocate of values-based entertainment myself, right. and so I really appreciate what you're doing. Tell me how you see some of the changes that have taken place in recent years with filmmakers. There have been a lot. I mean, it used to be there was a time when you could get all the Christians in Hollywood together in a bathroom. And that's, you know, we, there wasn't, wasn't very many. 
But today, it's amazing. Not only are there uh, thousands and thousands of them, but uh, we'll probably have at the Biola Media Conference today, probably have six or 700 people together who are all believers who are in very highly placed positions in the industry. So number one, we're growing a lot. We're growing and we're impacting the industry. Number two, I think we're getting better at what we do. Used to be people thought they could lead with being a Christian and that would make everything okay if they were a terrible director or writer. Today, we realize that you've got to be a great writer first. You've got to be a great producer first, a great director if you want to get Hollywood's attention. And then they don't really care what you believe if you're a great writer or producer. I, I, I tell people all the time that, that um, you know, Hollywood is a place where there's some really weird folks. I mean, there are guys here that worship rocks and hug trees. So being a Christian isn't that weird. Uh, as long as you're really good at what you do, people will hire you. They'll want to work with you. And um, it, it's really opened a lot of doors. So I say, I think what we're seeing today is a radically shifting idea of what being a Christian in Hollywood means. And it's really encouraging. Okay. So you believe that... Uh Christian themed movies can make it in sure. the mainstream? Absolutely. I think, you know, th there's two markets. There's obviously a market for explicitly Christian content, you know, whether that's Christian TV or radio or movies, books, whatever. I think there's always going to be a market for people that want to see something explicitly Christian. Um, however, what really the Biola Media Conference is focused on is for those people that want to get into mainstream media. How do we how do we inject our faith into major projects out there and the big projects? And and it may be in a subtle way. It may be just drawing people closer toward morals and values and those issues. And uh, so I, I'm really encouraged there because we're seeing The Blind Side, for instance, is a great example of a movie that was not really an explicitly Christian movie at all, but it was a powerful, powerfully compelling story. So uh, that's what I'm encouraged by, and I think we're seeing a lot more of that happen today. Do you think that a Christian movie, if, if your goal is to make it into the mainstream, do you think that in order to be realistic that it has to be edgy or cross some of the family um, friendly lines? No, not at all. I think that there are stories. I'm a believer that there are stories that need to be told where you do have to cross some lines. I think you, how do you tell the Holocaust without showing a horrific scene in there, for instance? You can't be, you, you've got to be truthful first. You've got to be really honest and truthful. So I, I don't shy away from encountering violence or sexual situations because that happens in life. And if we're going to tell that story, we have to show some things. However, there's no question that that uh, some of the biggest money-making films of the last 10 or 20 years were G-rated films. And so there, if it's a great, powerful, compelling story, that's number one. You know, if it's a really, if you're dealing with it honestly and it's a great story, you don't have to cross lines. You don't have to get violent. You don't have to show sexuality. You don't have to show a lot of those profanities and things like that. Just be honest and tell the real story. Okay. Great. Well, that's some very good advice. And thank you so much. Hey, and I, I think I have a workshop to go to. You're okay. <laughs> okay, that's I'm good. late. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>